Hey everyone! Today on the Plastic Canvas we're painting Judith from the Faceless by Alter Ego Games. Hey everyone, Matt here from The Plastic Canvas and welcome to episode 5 of this faceless painting series. Today we're painting Judith who is the last of the faceless characters to be painted and these are the characters that you can move around the edge of the board to change the direction of the compass which then affects the direction that your party moves in. Now in the last video which I think was Alan there were two changes that I mentioned I was thinking of making. The first is if there is a single step that's exactly the same that goes for a period of time, like if there's a particular part of the mini that just gets painted all the one colour, I could then snip out bits and pieces of that step to condense it and save a little bit of time. So for example, when I go to paint Judith's hair, because it's all blonde, you don't need to see me paint every single strand to know that I'm painting it blonde, especially if I'm painting it in the exact same way. So when it gets to that part, I snip out some bits of it so you can still see what I'm doing you can still see how I'm going about it the consistency of the paint all that sort of stuff but it just saves a bit on time you don't need to see me paint every single strand of hair so I've done that with a different with a few different parts where I'm just doing the exact same thing for an extended period of time and where you don't need to see every single second of that step and the other thing is just around the way that I show what colour I'm using at the moment. So what I have been doing is just up in the top right hand corner, just typing out the brand name and the name of the colour. Now that was getting a bit time consuming because it takes a little while to go through, find every single spot where I changed colour, type it out, all that sort of stuff. So what you can see I'm doing now is just in that same corner, just putting the bottles of the paint that I'm using so that you can see the name and you can see what the colour looks like so that when I'm like in this case I'm mixing the, um, the oceanic blue and the light blue you can see exactly what shades are being mixed together so I hope that this is a clearer way of showing which colours I'm using and when and exactly when they're getting mixed in or um, colours are being taken out but it also makes it a bit easier for me to um, put these videos together um, because it's a little less time consuming. So hopefully with those couple of changes there, I should be able to get videos out a little bit more regularly. Um, and also from your end, it should hopefully be um, a bit clearer um, as well. So please do um, leave a comment down below whether you think they were good changes to make, if they're actually beneficial, um, or if you think it would be, would be better to go back to how I was doing if it was clearer then. Now just in this little bit here, in case it's not clear what I'm doing, I'm just testing to see how um, the red and brown wash work over the top of the gold, um, just because as I go to shade the, the frame, I want to see which colour I was going to use. As you can see, neither of them looked any good, and so what I've done is I've mixed up a bit of a kind of a rose goldy sort of colour, just to go for a bit of an old timey, old fashioned looking frame. And th this colour I really, really liked. Um, and then I do do a uh, sepia wash over the top, the Citadel light brown wash, just to add a bit of um, depth and bring out some of the detail a little bit more. But yeah, um, mixing this colour up here worked a lot better than just putting a wash over the top.
Now in the previous video, the Allen video, at the start I mentioned that when I was painting the chalkboard, I did that before painting the minis on either side of the chalkboard because when I did the Sam, which is the one with the cupboard in the middle, there were some vines coming out from inside the cupboard that came from behind the pig that's sitting in there. And because I did the pig first, then painting the vines in behind was tricky because I didn't want to touch the pig which I'd already finished. So I needed to feed the brush in, just get the vines. You know, I was able to do it in the end, but it was just unnecessarily difficult. So then with Alan and the chalkboard, I did the board in behind the minis first and I painted the lettering so that then when it came to doing the mini, I didn't have to worry about like after having finished the mini and all of the highlighting and shading, touching it with the paint when going to do the, the chalkboard. Same thing happened here. So I painted the mirror in behind the minis on both sides before then actually doing the mini so that I then didn't have to worry as I'm feeding the brush in behind to try and paint the mirror about touching the mini. So basically it, it, it was just about, before actually painting, having a look over the whole thing and working out which parts were going to be a little more challenging um, and just sort of taking care of those hard to reach spots before going straight into the mini. So when I did, uh, yes, yeah, Sam, the one with the cupboard, I just jumped into doing um, the minis first because they're sort of the, the parts that kind of have the most impact But I just needed to stop and have a look and just pick out those parts that were going to be hard to reach And so that's what I just did um, With yeah with Alan and with Judith here just having a look and just seeing those parts that were going to be difficult Taking care of them first and then coming back to doing the mini at the end So that I don't need to worry about getting any paint on on the mini after I've done all that highlighting and shading
Now there's a little part here that I wasn't sure of how to paint, so if you've come across something similar with any models that you've painted, I'd love to hear in the comments down below how you've sort of worked around this. But on the good side of Judith there, she's supposed to be lifted up off that cushion stool thing, and with one of her feet, her foot's up in the air, but I guess to give the, the sculpt still some, still some stability, there's a little bit of plastic joining her foot to the stool, but it's actually supposed to not be there, if that makes sense. That's supposed to look like her foot is coming up off the stool. So I wasn't sure how to paint that so that it didn't look like her shoe was, like she was wearing gigantic platforms, but I didn't want it to stand out. I still wanted it to look as though her foot was being lifted up off the stool. So I just, I painted it the same color as her shoe. Um, I figured it would kind of just disappear a bit, but yeah, I wasn't sure how to go about that because what the intention is, is that it's clear, but obviously I can't paint that part of the plastic clear. So yeah, I just like to hear if you've had a mini that's got that same sort of thing where it's supposed to look like part of it is up off the ground or something like that, but there still had to be plastic there to give it stability, how you've gone about painting that to give it, you know, to, to, to make it not stand out, but yeah, it, it, it was a bit of a tricky part. Well, it wasn't tricky, but it was it was hard to know exactly what to do. So I just went down, just painted the same colour as a shoe. I don't know. It's um, it was the best that I could think of. Now in case you haven't seen some of my recent videos, I have been talking a little bit lately about how I think washes do get overused and how I used to be an absolute culprit for that one of just base coating the mini and then just putting a wash on everything because that's what you're supposed to do and not really thinking about what I was putting the wash on and whether it was the right way of actually going about getting some shading. So here with Judith, you can see that I'm putting a wash on all of the surfaces. Now the reason that I'm doing a wash on all of the surfaces here and not doing any layering to build up the, the shading, and by layering I mean just taking a darker version of the um, of the base coat, 
thinning it right, right down so that um, as each layer of paint goes on, it only makes a little bit of a difference and then just gradually building it up till you get the depth of color that you want. So the reason I'm not doing that and I'm doing a wash on everything is because there's so many recesses and little deta details in June that are really, really close together. So like with her hair, the wash is perfect for that because it settles so nicely into all of the, um, you know, the, the different, yeah, the, the recesses of her hair. Um, also in her, in her dress, even though there are folds, they're quite shallow and close together. And so they're not deep enough and flowy enough, for lack of a better term, for the, that purple wash to pull in there and then create a really defined line between where the wash has settled and where it hasn't. So yeah, a, a wash was perfect for all over Judith because there were no um, spots where the recesses were um, were too deep that the the wash was going to pull too much. But also there was nowhere where the um, where there were gradual um, like curves in it, so that you were going to see a defined line between where the wash had settled and then where it stopped. So yeah, that's why I used a wash all all over Judith. Okay, now in some of my videos, I have talked about the way that I try and create a focal point for someone, for someone's attention to be drawn to when they're looking at a mini. So I always sort of have a look at a mini and think about, right, what's going to be the most obvious feature and the one that's going to be easiest to create um, something sort of visually um, contrasting about it so that that's where someone's gaze is going to be looking. And in a mini like this, it was really, really obvious that the hair on the evil side is what was going to be the focal point. So the hair really on sort of both sides, but especially on the evil side where it's long and flowing and got lots of shape and form to it, that's where I spend a lot of my time compared to how much highlighting I put into other parts. So for example, her shoes get no shading at all, or um, well, sorry, no highlighting at all. But with her hair, um, you'll be able to see as I'm um, with the, the paint bottles in behind there, um, I do build up quite a few layers of paint. So first of all, there was the, the base coat, which was the mix of um, the uh, earth brown and the pale saffron, just to create that sort of blondish kind of look. Then the sepia wash went over the top to fall into the recesses to then give it some shading um, and just bring out the forms in the hair. Then the first stage of highlighting was just to go back to the base coat um, and that went to most of the hair because in reality most of it really is going to, to get some light. And now I'm starting to lighten it off and go back 
and start to pick out where the light is going to have its, its higher levels of concentration. So even the, the second layer of highlighting, which got a little bit of white in it, still went to a lot of the surfaces because a lot of them are still going to get um, some level of light. But then as I lighten it off, every layer will, I, 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 I start to paint less and less and less until I get to the point where I'm only picking out just the tops of the most protruding strands of hair. Um, and it's not just the strands of hair that are at the very, very top, it's the ones from the top to the bottom that are sticking out, so that, um, yeah, they're the ones that will be getting, um, getting the light. So even some of the, the strands that are more towards the bottom, if they're sticking out, they're gonna catch the light, they still get that highest level of, um, of highlight. And so by going to the, the level of highlighting that I have here and building the level of contrast that I have, this is hopefully where um, someone's gaze will be when they're when they're looking at the mini. They're not they're not going to look at her shoes. They're not going to look at the the doll that's in her hand or something like that. It's going to be her hair. Um, and as you'll hear from quite a few different people saying, um, build that contrast up around their face, um, and then and being the top of the mini that's where their gaze will be drawn. But yeah, so usually I just try and have a look and think, right, what's a feature of the mini that I can pick out um, and then spend my time with my highlighting and shading so that their um, attention will be drawn to that part and then I can save a bit of time somewhere else. So yeah, things like um, the, the shoes and the skin tone and things like that um, didn't get quite as much. The face got, got the attention, um, but the arms and legs and things like that didn't get much because I'm trying to draw their attention away from those parts and put it onto the hair um, and the face. Um, and yeah, I'm really, really happy with how the, how the hair came out, regardless of whether someone's attention gets drawn to it or not. Just that depth of color um, and the contrast that was built, I'm really, really happy with how that came up. But yeah, back when I first started painting, I didn't create a focal point at all. Everywhere just got an even level of attention. Um, and then looking back at those ones, there isn't anything about them that actually draws your attention. That's probably one of the problems, is that if, um, when I wasn't creating a focal point, you'd look at a mini and yeah, there was nothing to really draw your gaze. And so you just kind of, just kind of looked over the whole thing um, without be really being drawn to anything in particular. So that's why I'm trying to do, trying to create these focal points, is so that when you do look, you do have something naturally to draw your eyes, and that draws you into the mini more than having nothing in particular to actually um, focus on. So I'm just finishing off Judah's eyes here, just putting a, a black dot in each just for the iris. But the advantage with minis like this that's made it really, really easy to paint the eyes is because the eyes are actually quite large. And so it's easy to sort of get some shading around the edge of the eyes and um, help sort of get a bit of, bit of definition. But the way that I um, learned to paint eyes when you don't really have that, um, that's, the, the size of the eyes to work with is I put a black, um, fill the eye socket in with black first and then come back with the white and fill that, that socket then with white but leave that top line of the socket black then do the iris, just do a dot for the iris roughly sort of in the middle and then finish it off with the skin tone and just follow in from the corner of the eye that meets the nose and then just run a line along the bottom of the eye then to the outside. Um, and if you cover up part of the iris, that's fine with that because in reality that's what happens. And what that does is it gives a bit more um, depth, depth to the eye because it looks like you've got that shadow running along the top of it. So with, in, in this case, because the eyes are quite big and the wash pulled in nicely around the edge and gave it some contrast and some shading, I don't need to do that a step first of filling the socket with black. But 
if you're working with quite a simple mini that doesn't have the level of um, form in the sculpt that these do and the eyes are quite small that that's a good thing that I picked up along the way so just yeah fill the socket with black first then do the white of the eye but leave that line of black along the top then do the iris and then come back with the skin tone run it along the bottom to sh finish shaping the eye um, and that sort of is a very very simple way of painting an eye that still gives a bit of um, a bit of depth to it and a bit of form to it.